So remember, S stands for steadiness. Now with the S style, the focus here is on how we approach pace and consistency. It's really how we attempt to control and steady the pace and the consistency of the environment. Do you like to go at a fast pace? Do you like to go at a slow pace? So the high S is very, very patient and they use time to their advantage. The S style, the emotion that they carry is patience. And the other thing is they tend not to express emotion. The higher the S style, the less emotion that people will see. You won't tend to show it on your face. You won't tend to show it in your physiology. You'll tend to repress or suppress your emotions because you don't want other people to see them. With the S style, the greatest fear for them is a sudden change. It could be the sudden loss of a job. It could be the request to suddenly move location. It could be a job offer that comes in at unexpected and they fear that they might lose their stability because the S style is always trying to steady the environment. They're trying to get the world to slow down. They're trying to make everything predictable because they fear losing their stability and their security. Now, if you're a high S style, these are some words that may describe you. When it comes to steadying the pace of the environment, you could come across as calming, as a team person, consistent, composed, and steady. Perhaps you're a low S style. You'll be more flexible, you'll be extremely energetic, you'll be fidgety, you'll be active, and you'll be spontaneous. So are you a high S or are you a low S style? Go to the chat box. Which of those words would describe you? Calming, team person, consistent, composed, steady. Or are you a low S, flexible, energetic, fidgety, active, spontaneous? What words describe you? Now, if you'd like to turn over to page 12 of your disc report, you can have a look at your word sketch. And if you go over to the third column, it says disc focus, pace and consistency. And when you look down your list, you're going to find a green box. And in that green box are going to be a series of descriptive words. Those words are going to show us how you attempt to manage the pace and consistency of the environment. So for me, words that describe me, discontented, energetic, fidgety, impetuous. What describes me? Energetic. I've got a ton of energy. I want to use my energy from the start of the day to the end of the day. I want to jump up and down. I want to run around in circles. I want to go fast. <laughs> what about you? SK, consistent and cooperative. CH, peaceful. Daryl, consistent. Diana, consistent. Daniel, loyal. Chassa, composed. Okay, excellent. So what I want you to do is I want you to choose that one descriptive word. What is that one descriptive word that best describes how you attempt to steady the pace and consistency in the environment? What is it that you do? What is your descriptive word? What is your descriptive word? Okay, what do you got there? Deliberate, relaxed, calming, composed. Okay, well, let's do this. My friend, Thanaskaran. Hey, my friend, good afternoon, Thanaskaran. Let's jump in the hot seat. Let's unpack your disc report. My friend, good afternoon. Welcome to 100X DNA Masterclass. Good afternoon. How are you enjoying yourself so far and what have you learned? 
Uh, so far, I have uh, learned quite a number of things, especially the DIC um, and NLP. Uh, mostly, I, I always talk about NLP to sometime when I meet people. Uh, by the way, I'm introvert. Excellent. Congratulations. Join but the I'm, party. <laughs> but I'm both. I can I can <laughs> smile and I can talk to people. Uh, I normally use the pace technique uh, to meet people. I use that. But I know just like that only, not not so much like what you <laughs> what we have shared today about the ISC. So uh, quite a number of things we learn. Excellent. Uh, well, my friend, let's make the most of our time together. We're going to get mm. some clarity, right. and with what I teach you here, okay. add that to your current knowledge, mm -hmm. and you'll become unstoppable. Yes. So let's start with the end in mind. Uh -huh. Twelve months from today, where do you want to be financially? How much money do you want to be earning twelve months from today? 300,000 RM. Is that Ringgit Malaysian? Okay, yeah, 300,000. Yes. Beautiful. Excellent. Now, 300,000. What are three things that excite you about earning 300,000 in a year? Uh, uh, first of all, uh, most of it, like, uh, we'll be talking about the coming up financially uh, independent. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and for the family. Uh, especially my wife and my children. At the same time, also my mom. So these are the three important things. Excellent. And why for your mom? What's important about helping your mom financially? Uh, the thing is, like uh, my mom, uh, because uh, when I was so small, uh, I think back when I was 40 years ago, I lost my father. So from there on, uh, it's my mom who took care of me. Uh, but anyway, she's in good health and we are really taking care of her. It's just that sometimes you want to do a bit extra than what you're doing now. So far, she's comfortable. But, uh, you know, I always want to challenge myself that I can do a little bit more, a little bit extra for her. Excellent. Yeah. So she looks at her son and she says, I'm proud of that man. I raised him all by myself and I'm proud of him. What a man he's become. Yes. That's what, Excellent. That's what we want to hear. Excellent. Beautiful. So 300,000 equals financial independence. Yep. It's for your family, your wife and your children. Mm -hmm. And it's also for your mum because 40 years ago you lost your father and your mother's raised you and you yes. want to do a little bit more for her. Yeah. Excellent. See, the thing is, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't have reasons and emotional reasons to achieve your goals, you'll never take action because reasons and emotional reasons are like the fuel in your car. The more emotional reasons you have to succeed, the more fuel you have in the tank. Exactly. And you know this, if you put a hundred liters of fuel in your car, you can drive a long way. Yep. But if you only put five liters, you go down the freeway, you break down on the freeway, <laughs> and now you've got to walk home. So the more reasons you have, emotional reasons, yep. the more energy. So what we say is mm. emotions, are energy yep. in motion. And why people procrastinate is because they don't have enough emotional reasons to succeed. They got logic. Hey, I can pay my bills. I can do A, B, and C. That doesn't matter because the conscious mind is the goal getter. Logic. But the unconscious mind, emotional, is the goal getter. And it's the unconscious mind that takes action, yeah. not the logic, not the conscious mind. Excellent. Yeah. So you've got three reasons. Okay. Now, in relation to 300,000, mm -hmm. where are you starting from today? Are you at 100, 150, 200, 250? Where are you starting from? Uh, okay, uh, this is what happened. Uh, to, uh, when this pandemic uh, hit us, I mean, it's in 2020, uh, up the March, uh, it was a bit panic for all of us. I mean, most of us were in panic state. Uh, but what happened was, because I'm from, from sales line, I did about 2.5 million in my sales. Uh, after the pandemic, I mean, up to March, uh, I was not even close. But thereafter, I did my business well during pandemic. Uh, in uh, 2.5, and then uh, 2021, I had uh, 2.7 million, 2.8 million, in fact. So I did well there. But last year, what happened? I had to go for an operation. So I went through an operation, and that took my time away for my recovery and all these things. 
So it is be on and off, and then my my sales drop, my income drop below hundred thousand. But previously I was uh, more than hundred thousand, hundred thirty, hundred forty. So that's what I, I I was my range. Okay. So I want to like bring back. Uh, in fact, I I know I can do it. Uh, so with the help and then with the the team support, with the encouragement, and so what I'm doing now, I'm trying to rebuild my health, and I'm so much better. I lost weight about fifteen kilogram now. Well done. Uh, Congratulations. So, uh, this, uh, <laughs> Excellent. That's the thing I'm doing. Uh, but uh, this energy that's uh, coming into DIC, I mean, there's a hundred times uh, DNA, definitely will be helpful. <laughs> Excellent. Beautiful. Yeah. So the best you've done, 130,000. Oh. How far below 100,000 are you at the moment? Uh, I, I did uh, about uh, 70. Okay. Last Beautiful. year, about 70. Okay. So that's so, because of I didn't work from September to now. To now, uh, to now, now only I start to rebuild and start to okay. come back. Uh, okay, I've got it. Excellent. So what I'm calculating here for mm. everybody is we calculate the gap. Mm. So you want to be at three hundred. You're starting at seventy thousand. The gap is two hundred and thirty thousand, and this is where all of your coaching and all of your training should take place. It's to close the gap of 230. And once you overcome those obstacles, mm -hmm. and there's two types of obstacles, there's internal obstacles mm -hmm. and there's external obstacles. And we call these constraints. Mm -hmm. Now in the study of constraints, 80% of the things that prevent you from getting what you want exist mm -hmm. inside of you. Yeah. We lack knowledge, we lack skill, and we lack attitude. And these three things, when combined equal success. Now, knowledge and skill only equate to 15% of your success. And this is where a lot of you struggle because you say, Daniel, I went to university. I did the course, I topped the grade. I went back and I did my masters, I did my doctorate. And I thought that if I had all of this knowledge, I'd succeed. But then what do you realize? You realize you lack skill. And what happens, Ramesh, when the students leave the university? They got all this knowledge, but there's no skill. And then they go, nobody told me this. So then they've got to go out and get skill. So now you've got knowledge and skill, but that only equates to 15% of your success. And people loop around, loop around, loop around for years because they haven't developed the attitude. attitude. The attitude is the mindset. And we call that our angle of approach. And a lot of people are approaching their income goals with a fear of losing their stability. They say, if I change jobs, I might lose my 70,000. And then what happens if this job doesn't work out? Then I might end up with nothing. And so because of their mindset, because of their attitude, they get stuck in the comfort zone. But you know what really makes people angry? <laughs> it's when you see somebody who knows less than you, who is stupider than you, but just has confidence and courage, then they go and take action and they're making millions of dollars. And you think to yourself, that person didn't even go to school. <laughs> they dropped out, they have no education, but everybody knows they got the right attitude. So mindset is our attitude. It's our angle of approach. So let's explore this and let's figure out how you need to approach your income goal. Yeah. So you can go from 70,000 to 300 and to be able to do it fast because you don't have time to wait. Exactly. You're getting older. Uh, your health has already been impacted. You don't have as much time as the younger ones. So it's got to happen now. True? True. Excellent. Okay. So let's explore this. The goal is 300,000. There's some recent health problems. You've already dropped 15 kilos. The income's down by 60,000. We're going to get back up and then beyond to 300,000. Mm. So let's have a look at your disc style. And we want to have a look at how you approach pace and consistency. So when it comes to you attempting to steady the environment mm -hmm. to deal with pace and consistency, there's th four words here mm -hmm. that best describe you. Flexible. So do you like to move at a pace Flex. that's alert, eager, flexible, or mobile? What describes you? Uh... I, I can easily uh, tune in to the, the environment. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm quite flexible because like uh, if I'm approaching people, I know how to 
balance uh, with these people who I'm with in front of me. <clears throat> with the uh, children, I mean, I have two children. Uh, even with my children, also I know how to manage them to get a, a result. So, so I'm flexible in in, in a way that uh, I also know how to manage my time in that sense. Excellent. Let me just ask you. Mm -hmm. What does flexibility mean to you? What's your descriptor? Okay, flexibility in 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 my understanding is like uh, people who can uh, adjust to the situation, and uh, like myself, I uh, I have my ability to uh, overcome things like uh, even the health uh, issue that I had before. It was like a uh, the doctor asked because I my diabetic was a bit high and doctor asked me to put on insulin. Uh, but thing I, I, I didn't say the doctor, I say it's okay doctor, I will try to do something to I, I, I flexible myself like instead of uh, uh, the food that I usually I, I love and I like I, I stop eating that. And I, I've got it. I've got it. So I'll just repeat this flexible. Uh, it's your ability to adjust. Yes. It's to overcome the obstacles. Mm. Doctor says, stop eating this, you stop it. Start taking this, you take it. Ah. So you're very flexible. Excellent. Now, being flexible on the approach to 300,000 ringgit Malay, you're starting at 70. You've got to get to 300. Why is being flexible important on the way to this goal? Um, actually, I mean, because I have a team... Uh, I have a team of uh, like about 14 people uh, with me in the, in the business because I'm from financial industry. Uh, actually, by being flexible, it is uh, more hurting, actually. Ah, interesting. Okay. Because it will hurt because when we are so flexible, we are so accommodative uh, rather than uh, we being um, like probably like uh, in front of me, I got some words that are probably like a more determined or, or, or self-driven uh, or decisive. Uh, but most of, most of the time, I'm a team player. I'm team person. So I can uh, I can change people who are, they were so quiet uh, some time back, but uh, I can manage to change them and then start doing sales. And uh, it, it has been happened, but sometimes uh, I think maybe I'm so too flexible. With them mm. and, uh, so that could be hurting uh, myself rather than I'm taking a decisive, like a, I be. Uh, like Let me just give you an example. Let me give everybody an example. Uh -huh. When it comes to the S style, what the S style also wants is relationships. Hmm. So if we have a look at the S style here, the S style wants relationships. Hmm. And if you're a low S, then what you'll do is you'll want to get into relationships really fast. Mm. And oftentimes the low S style gives too many concessions away. They give too much away, give too much away just to get that relationship. And albeit they get the relationship, most of the time it's not profitable enough. Does that make sense? Yep. Where the high S also wants a relationship, but oftentimes the high S is too slow. They're too guarded. They don't open up. People don't really know who they are. Mm. And it's hard to build a relationship. So if we're a low S, sometimes we give too many things away just to get the relationship, mm. even at our own expense. Is that, is that an example that you understand? Yeah, yeah yes, I, I totally can connect to that. Excellent. So here's what I want you to do. On the way mm. to your goal of 300,000, I want you to really just pay attention mm -hmm. to the other people's S style that you're dealing with. Because if you're a low S style, mm -hmm. you'll want to get into a relationship really quickly and you might give too much away. But if you're working or selling to a high S style, mm -hmm. remember, they don't want you to give everything away. Mm -hmm. They don't want to move fast. Do you want to they want to move slow. So in terms of flexibility, I want you to pay attention to the person that you're selling to. If they're fast moving like you, move fast. If they're slow moving, have that flexibility to adapt, adjust and respond to them. Yep. Because a lot of people in finance, 
mm-hmm. tend to have a higher S style, but you've got a lower S style, which uh, for you is an advantage because selling a financial services product, you're going to move faster. Where yeah. most people who are selling financial services tend to move too slow, they miss the market, they miss the opportunity, they don't follow up fast enough. Yeah. So it could be a bit of yin and yang, help and hinder. Does that make well, sense? Probably uh, prior to my school days, and probably I was a uh, high high S. Uh, what I did, I, I shift myself into low S, and then uh, my eye was a low eye. Now it's moved to the higher eye. Mm. So what what Thanissaran is talking about here is he's talking about the movement in his disc style. So your D style here Mm. is consistent. And this moves at a slow pace. So when it comes to getting results, you'll move at a slow pace. Yes. Now, without further discovery, that could either help or hurt you. Hurt, definitely hurt. Hurts, okay. So we're going to put here that slow pace hurts, okay? The other thing that we can have a look at here is from your adapted style to your natural style, what will happen is at work, you'll put a lot more energy into getting the attention of people and contacts. Mm. And over time, that could also be very tiring for you because you got to put on maybe a little bit of a mask every day, be more upbeat, be more optimistic. Mm. But... That's that there moves at a fast pace. So on my analysis here, what you have between your I and your S style, and these are the things I teach in my accelerator, you have what's called a pace and priority conflict. Your D style moves slow, your I style moves fast. If there's a result, you'll move slow. If there's people, you'll put a lot of energy and you'll move fast. And what can come from that is a lot of confusion and a lot of inner conflict because why am I going so slow to get results? But if there's an opportunity just to talk to somebody, I want to jump on it. Yep. And that for you is where you need your coaching here because that's got to be able to stabilize so you can produce consistent results. Mm. Does that make sense? Your, your yep. area of coaching. Exactly. Say, for example, if you're in my accelerator program, we'd be focusing on balancing this out. Mm because that can create a lot of confusion. Fast, slow, fast, slow, fast, slow, left, right, up, down. What am I doing? Oh my gosh. Maybe I'll just reset. Maybe I'll get sick and start again. (laughs) Okay, my friend, well done. Awesome. I love talking to you. Thank you so much.